setting up the camera for shoot. Now it is very important to follow the standard protocol before you go for a shoot or start recording with your professional video camera. We start with checking the camera. It is important to make sure that there is no physical damage to the camera and all the parts and accessories are intact. One also need to make sure that the lens is not broken or has any mark or stain on it. Once you are through with this, then you need to put the battery in and switch on the camera and do a trial recording. Before going on a shoot to a location, it's always good to do a recce first, just to make sure that the location is fit for shooting in terms of sound and light. As we know that light plays an important role in video recording. So during recce, we need to make sure that there is good lighting at the location. We have to take certain decisions like, do we need external lights or is the natural light enough? And if we are going with natural light only, then what is the direction and intensity of light at that particular time? After doing our recce and deciding our requirements, we finally go to the location with all the equipments and accessories. Now at the location, before switching on the camera, we set our lights, we make sure that our light is sufficient for the camera and is also giving the look and the feel that we desire for our video. We can also use a light meter to check on the amount of available light. Although nowadays, light meters are inbuilt function of digital video cameras. When everything is set, we switch on our camera and the first thing we do is check the light meter and accordingly set the aperture and shutter. Let's say we are shooting an interview. In this case, we make our frame and depending on required depth of field, we choose our aperture. Remember, a higher F number will get more area in focus but will allow lesser light. And to compensate that, we can go for a slower shutter, which allows light to fall on sensor for longer duration. Depending on the amount of available light, we can increase gain to increase light or use an ND filter to reduce the amount of light falling on the sensor. Thus, there are many ways to control the amount of light falling on the sensor. We can adjust shutter, aperture, gain or ND filter. But it's important to remember that every change is done to achieve our actual visual requirement as every change has some other effect associated with it. For example, decreasing F number to allow more light results in low depth of field. Reducing shutter speed will result in brighter image but will also give motion blur. After fixing our frame and light, we do the white balance. To do white balance, we put a white sheet in front of the camera where our subject is placed under lights. We zoom in on the sheet and cover the entire frame in white. And then we long press the auto white balance button given on the camera. Once white balance is done, we select the recording format and frame rate. Different camera manufacturers provide different recording video format. For example, HEVC, AVC Intra, AVC HD are some video formats available in different cameras. The latest Panasonic P2 HD uses AVC Intra as video coding format. After choosing our recording format, we choose our video resolution, that is the dimension of our video in terms of pixels. With continuous upgradation of technology, we have moved from SD 720 into 576 to HD 1920 into 1080 to 4K and 8K resolutions. The resolutions are broadly categorized as SDTV, standard television, HDTV, high definition television, and UHD, that is the ultra high definition. For television standard, we choose full HD, that is 1920 into 1080 pixel resolution. One of the advantages of using a professional video camera is the audio recording option that they provide. These cameras have XLR inputs for microphones and they also have internal microphones and are capable of recording two to four audio channels simultaneously. So after setting our camera in terms of light and framing, we move to audio setting. We connect our external microphones to the camera using XLR cables and put them on channel one or two as required. We may or may not use the internal microphone, but it is recommended to use them as they are good to capture ambience of the location. Once the microphones are properly attached to the camera, we plug in the headphone into audio out and adjust the audio levels. Then we format the memory card and make sure the batteries are fully charged. Check all the connections again and then once all these settings are properly checked and desired values are selected, we roll the camera, that is we press the recording button. 
While the camera is recording, whether it is a long or a short take, the camera person needs to be with the camera for entire duration. Many times, the camera person is also accompanied by a camera assistant for helping him with the setting up the camera. Safety of camera and other equipment is very important. Following are some safety points that you should keep in mind. These are electronic cameras and they are very fragile. Any mishandling can lead to bigger issues. Make sure the camera is never unattended and lens cover is closed when the camera is not in use. Camera is properly cleaned at regular intervals and is protected from dust and moisture. Cameras are not operated beyond their mentioned heat and humidity capacity. Make sure accessories and external cables are connected to their designated slots. Camera should be properly attached to tripod or handheld rigs. If camera is not recording, check if card is properly inserted or not. Some video cameras come with automatic features like auto shutter or aperture. In case you want manual control, see that all these automatic features are turned off. Video cameras were primarily used by news broadcasters and television programs. But because of their mobility and continuous improvement in quality, they are now also used in documentary filmmaking, event videos, video blogging, promotional videos, etc. These cameras have made production easier, not only for professional broadcasters, but also for amateur filmmakers and video bloggers. There is a race among major companies like Sony, Panasonic and Canon to introduce better cameras in the market. And with better camera, the picture quality is better and also the video production becomes easier. But at the end of the day, the camera is just a machine which records images on our command. It's not just the camera that creates the image, it's our vision and experience that matters the most in creation of a beautiful and meaningful image. You may point and shoot, but that alone is not professional, as written by Robert B. Musburger in his book titled Single Camera Video Production. That is all we have for you today. We hope that the session was insightful and you have enjoyed this session. See you again. Till then, thank you and goodbye.